Okay, Blee Nedr, last day we'll spend on the Halakha Lamaisa before we go on in the Ramam. Uh, no commitment. I know. <laughs> okay, so so a uh, quick review. Uh, the Machaber brought down and the Ramah brought down the Ramam's priorities, but with a few more exceptions about uh, paternal brother first and then maternal brother, and then also Yoshe Eretz Yisrael uh, and Yoshe Chutzlarts, which we still didn't get the reconciliation of like at what point that factor comes in. We're under the impression that it's like, um, did we end up saying yesterday, if you're in Chutzlarts, so you obviously take care of your city, yeah. but then if you're going to Irachir, it sounds like you go to Eretz Yisrael first, yeah. and then then you're, uh, you're uh, yeah, then, then you other. Think, could you also like flip that and say that if you're living in Eretz Yisrael, you go to your city, and then another city in Eretz Yisrael. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Going right. Yeah, I also wonder if, um, if this would be a tiebreaker for like uh, relatives, right? Um, yeah, Yosef. Also, uh, could also be interpreted uh, as yes, only applying if you're a that If you're in Eric's control, then you prioritize Eric's control. And... I don't think so, right? Because then that would be included in Anie Iracha. No, if you're in Eretz Yisrael, then you probably always Eretz Yisrael. As in, why should you try and care more about Tel Aviv? Oh, you mean yeah. other cities within there? That could be. That could be. Yoshvei Eretz Yisrael, according to Yoshvei Chutz Laaretz. I think it's kind of like it's no one on. I mean, sorry, I don't want to name it. No, 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 which way? The way it is said or another way? No, not, the way it's said is just saying that it's the one that you know, Yeah, the recipients. Yeah, that's how I would read it. Yeah, yeah. And were you positing that this Eric Cicero Kutz Arts can modify like things like Krogan? Yeah, like, like let's say... I have a son who lives in Eric Cicero, I have a son who lives in Kutz Arts. So I prioritize my son who lives in Eric Cicero, so both from... Yeah, right. Yeah. That's, why, that's what I was wondering. I'm not yeah. saying no, definitely... Do you know but... any other modifying technology? Yeah, what about that? That's not Eretz Yisrael. No, I'm saying, I assume that there are other... Right, in other words, the Krovim the, the, the hierarchy that he put up here is like, seems to be absolute, but then within Krovim that are not specified an order for, then maybe there's like a tiebreaker uh, or something. I don't know. Okay, but now let's go on. Oh, and then he also said your own Parnassah comes first. Uh, etc. Okay, so now let's do the Arko Shulchan. I'm not even going to read the Arko Shulchan's codification of the previous one. Uh, oh, he said, you're, you're not high in Sadaka until you have a Parnasa, right? So the Arko Shulchan says, so when we wrote earlier that you are not high to give Sadaka until you have a Parnasa, that's with your continual Sadakas, Maeser uh, Ochomesh, like Maeser Ochomesh, uh, the, you know, the Standards. Mm-hmm. But to fulfill the mitzvah tzedaka, the minimum everyone has to do. Af ani hamis parnas mitzvah tzedaka, right? Uh, if, if even an ani has to do it, then certainly someone who's you know uh, not having a parnasa. Yeah. Little ani question. Yeah. I don't remember if we said anything about it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't do it. Um, yeah. But if you have an ani who's not getting a parnasa from Tadaka, like this is an ani who like people aren't giving to for whatever reason. Yeah. Does he qualify in Af Ani Hamifarnes? Uh Hamid, yeah, Farnes, uh Minha Tadaka. Meaning if he's like literally not being supported. Right. Uh you mean would he still have to give it Tadaka? Yeah. Uh-huh. I think so. Yeah. And uh and he did say this earlier that um yeah, because that's a mitzvah like on every person and uh, and uh, their only qualification is like, I think he brings down the question there of if un, an Ani is only high to give to someone who's equal or lower than him. Right. 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 But I think he's also to give okay. uh, Shlishi Zashako. Yeah. Okay, so the, the, like, the part is like, in the sense, the more machmir, there are cases like a person has no support because they can say all this money isn't even his money, but it's just, uh, it's no, I think we treat it as his money. No, no, I don't, I don't think it's in this. And obviously, no, luckily, it's as much yeah. as spend. You're saying conceptually, then... As in, that's why you would think that he would not, but the Ani, who has no support, would have to. Yeah, it's a bit of a... I, I understand your uh, intuitive thing. It's a little bit of a weird thing, though, right? To say that guy who has nothing, you would think that he's more high than the guy who is being given something. Well, obviously, there's nothing he can't give, does not he? Has yeah, yeah, I, I don't know. Got himself. I hear what you're saying. Yeah, I don't know if, if, if uh, I would say that. Okay, but Amnam be Ikari Advarim Kashali Tuva. But with the Ikari Advarim, this is very difficult for me. Deem Nomar, 
Devarim, if im uh, Neemar, I don't know if Neemar or Nomar, Devarim Kipshutan, if we, if the things were said uh, according to their Pshad, Elu Kodmin La Elu, that these come before these, Elu La and these to these, Dakavana Sheino Tsarach Litin Klal Madrega Sha'acharza, that you don't need to give at all to the level after this. What? Sorry, Dakavana, sorry. Did I skip something? No, no I didn't. <laughs> I, I think there should not be a period here. Uh, I think, okay, let, 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 no, there's, Ilu Dim Nemar Devarim Kipshutan. No, so the simple way of reading it is, it's like tears, right? Like you, you, you give all your tzedakah to your, your family. And then only if there are no anim in your family, then you go to the next level. And if only there are no anim there, then you go to the next level. I think that's what he's saying that the Kipshutan would be. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah I mean, he says it's not klal. I mean, you don't have the chiv until you don't have a... Uh, until the, you've emptied out the yeah. canister. <laughs> Whatever, yeah, right. Yeah. That, that's divine kapshutan, okay. Ulfize ha hadavar yedua shalcho ashir yesh harbe krovi manim. But according to this, uh, you have the fact that it's known that every ashir has many wealthy relatives, many relatives. Poor relatives. Poor relatives, yeah. Meaning is that poor relative to him, or is that just that they're relatives who are poor? Relatives who are poor. Why is that a thing? Um, I don't know. Him, yeah. yeah, I don't know. It's a whole thing, you don't know. Right, I mean, the, oh, all the relatives come flocking. Oh, I'm your second cousin twice removed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that it makes sense in the sense that relative to him, his relatives are poor. I don't, I don't think he's saying relative to him though. I, yeah, I don't think so. I, I don't think there's any relative any uh, that we've introduced at all. Um, yeah, um, I, I had to be. Had, had yeah, to be yeah, said, yeah. The Kol Shkain Bayis Shet Sadaka Shalom Muetes. All the more so for a Baal Bayis whose Sadaka is very little. Okay, now I'm totally lost. Koshkin Labal Bayes Shah Tzedakah Shalom Muetas. Tzedakah Shalom, meaning his Tzedakah that he receives? I think that he gives. Why is Baal Bayes giving? Well, because he's having Tzedakah. Why is Muetas? Because he's not here. What? He only had a little. Yeah, because it's relative to the Ashir. Wait, wait, wait. No, but in a relative scale, they're both giving 10 to. Like yeah, hand. let's go on. I, I want to get the, the full thing. Uh, so I'm making the, the classic mistake of stopping reading and then the answers in the next sentence. The im kain If so, according to this, osam hanim shein lahem krovim krovim ashirim yamusa brav. So now it's going to turn out that the uh, niim who don't have rich relatives are going to die of starvation, right? So you'll have the, uh, a niim who have a lot of poor relatives, and if if he has to fully support all of his relatives before giving to anybody. So then the, the Ani who doesn't have relatives is going to like be unlucky and he's just going to die. Mm -hmm. Okay. Of uh, How can you say this? Yeah. Can I find what Sure. Okay, yeah, right. I mean, I think he's exaggerating a bit. But also... Um, I don't think it's like, I don't think it's outlining to say that, you know, when you know, the army, uh, how the army, uh, they know how to, that you're not going to have any more money left over if you follow the right idea. Well, how much then do you give to the Ani who's a car of before you start giving to the well, other? Name of right, but isn't that the problem? Isn't he saying if you do that, then you're going to end up depleting all of your tzedakah money for your krovim, and then you're never going to get to people who don't have krovim. Or right, because so he can only give a fifth. Of yeah, money. right. So even if he has more money left over, it's yeah. not... Right. Let's see. Let's see what he answers. Uh, <laughs> now it's a pun. I mean, I know there's an expression, but yeah. Um, uh, someone should have given him a... <laughs> no. <laughs> Uh, that the explanation of the matters is such. Certainly, every Baal Bais or Ashir who gives tzedakah is obligated to give a portion to far off Anim. Ella de la Krovav yitain yoser milche eno Krovav. But to his relatives, he gives more than to his non relatives. And everyone goes going to this. Now it's going to end up being that the uh, people, the poor people who don't have rich relatives are still going to be getting tzedakah. It's just that you are prioritizing in the sense of like caring for them more, you know. 
Um, okay, now this also has a big impact on what it means that your pranas is first. Im no more kipshuto. If you were to say that according to the pshuto, im kain ruban shel balei batim paturim minat zedaka legamre. So then most people would be putter from zedaka completely because they're feeding themselves and their kids, right? Levad shlishi shekel b'shana, except for shlishi shekel b'shana. But you do a derov yisrael halavai shias piklem parnasasam hotza asam. Uh, it's known that for the majority of the Jews, would not would 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 not that it were. What does the article like to say for Halavai? Not that it no. No, if only it were. So if only it were the case. But the article says some weird thing. Uh, where if only it were true, she asked lahem parnasasam lo asam that they were making enough to 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 meet their expenditures, right? That they wouldn't be like in in the red or whatever. Lufize yafturu kula minat tzedaka zulas hashem gadol. And then according to that standard, everyone would be putter from tzedaka except for really rich people. Mm-hmm. and in places where there are no rich people then all the poor people would die of starvation how can you say this and also the minhag is not like that people give tzedakah to people who are not their uh, not their household members even if they're like you know struggling to make ends meet yeah question um, like what is their home is it just they would just be saying they were there would not be a chilu, but it's still not usher. Yeah, I mean, you can solve, yeah, but solve I think he's saying, yeah, so the basic from the you have to give anyway. Yeah, but isn't that he's saying? That's what he's trying to say. What the, the basic halacha is. Why is it not minhag though? Because he's saying that that's a raya that 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 that, that this is not how we paskin. Oh, uh, we, yeah. Minhag here meaning like the practice. Yeah, the practice, right, right. Not yeah, like, not yeah. like we were no hag to give. To other no, no, no. Yeah, and and again, this is in terms of methodology here. Um, is this a good time to review the thingy? Uh, mm, I really want to. Yeah, I do. We haven't read this in a while. What Mishnah Berura versus Aruch uh, Shulchan. On Minhag? No. Oh. I mean, it's going to be on. That's why I'm bringing it in. But that that little halakha by Rabbi Ari Enkin. This is sort of like the Ashkenazi story. They were Ashkenazi would be much more like a halakha follows what people do in general. Where Sfarim tends to be like they look. We have the books and uh, whatever, whatever something like that. Let's let's see what this, this is. is Rabbi... They're both Ashkenazi, right? Yeah, yeah. So no I'm saying it's kind of like that. That you'll see. Oh, so, right. this is Rabbi Ari Enkin writing about the um, the differences between the two. So, he says that, yeah, the Oracle Shogun is probably the most thorough and conveniently organized compilation of halakha today. Every halakha issue opens with a presentation of the relevant scriptural and Talmudic passages. So, okay, so too, unlike the Mishnah Brewer's text based tradition to design halakha, the Oracle Shogun tries to determine the halakha based on Talmudic precedents and contemporary practice, and often works hard to satisfy both. It's not since the Rambam that there has been a work of Allah that covers all the Jewish law like the Arachal does. Now we got Akim and Rambam Pekius by doing Arachal Shulchan, mm-hmm. uh, the true inher- uh, uh, successor of the Rambam. Um, yeah, fine. Uh, and then he says, "Why we, uh, you know, who takes precedence over?" Oh, I'll read this anyway. Rabbi Yehuda Henkin cites his grandfather, Rabbi Yosef Eliyahu Henkin, as having ruled that the Arachal Shulchan is the more definitive and authoritative decisor of Halacha. He offers a number of reasons for this. One reason is because most of the Arachal Shulchan was written after the Mishnah Berurah, mm-hmm. even though they were somewhat contemporaries. In fact, the Arachal Shulchan often cites the Mishnah Brewer before issuing his own ruling. Um, another reason why the Arachal Shulchan should be considered more authoritative is because it covers the entire Shulchan Arach, while the Mishnah Brewer only covers the Orachaim section. So too, as mentioned, the Arachal Shulchan also takes into account the common customs of his day before rendering a ruling. Finally, the Mishnah Brewer was essentially written by a scholar, while the Arachal Shulchan was written by a scholar who was also a practicing rabbi. As a practicing rabbi, the author regularly interacted with the community and dealt with the problems and issues that they faced. He had more hands-on experience in dealing with halakhic dilemmas. Indeed, Rabbi Moshe Feinstein is reported to have said that the Arachal Shulchan takes precedence of the Mishnah Brewer for this reason alone. And not that this is a raya, but this morning I asked for Pesach Ashila after presenting him with like all these like Akronim, and then he quoted the nail thing, yeah. And then uh, and then he uh, he just quoted the Arachal Shulchan. I was saying like, what do you do in a case where the Rama Paskins that it makes a difference what order you cut your nails in? And he just quoted the Arachal Shulchan, who ends up saying like, uh, these things have no basis in halacha and like <laughs> whatever you want. If you're if you're mafia, you're mafia. If not, not. I want to give a whole shit on that, but not not to Yeshiva, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so so um, that's that's uh, that's uh, quoting the minhag because uh, that's that's what he that's how he he do yeah okay lachin nira len neostati bar it seems clear to me does it shakas of hagaon de parnasaso kodemes that when the gaon must be the shakanach right writes that the parnasa comes his or maybe the no the ramaz one who wrote it right was it. Uh, Parnassus Atma, the Rama. Oh, um, okay. When the Gaon writes that the, your Parnassus comes first, 
Rock lechem tsar mine lachats. That's only talking about a guy who doesn't make any profit. He just has like bread and water to eat. Okay, so he's not an ani because he has meals, but he's like like really really dire in his, his like basic needs. Lechem tsar like narrow bread. Oh, it's like a baguette. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Uh, that would tsar is pain with an iron, tsara is also like trouble okay. or travail, but tsar is like bainham tsarim, like between the straits, the narrow tsar is the yeah, opposite of rachav, in a tsar, right? Um, lachin maybe raya mi hatsar fatim, mi hatsar fatis, hatsar fis. Uh, therefore, he brings a raya from <laughs> the French. Is that what it no, means? Because we're also saying long breath. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. She the sham hayatali chaye nefesh mamish. That in France, then people were like literally like like hanging on for their dear life. Shaya ra'ev ba'olam, because there was a famine in the world. Kamavor ba'malachim sham. It's possibly he's quoting another ga'on, because uh, the Ramah was not in France, uh-uh. right? Um, uh-uh. I mean, none of the ga'on were in France proper, but. Uh, the im no sar lo lechem umayin, and if they had uh, leftover bread and water, aviv imo kodni, then they would have to give it to their, uh, they would give it to their fathers and mothers. The akhir kach banav, and then their kids. Uh, uh, wait, who's the Ramah quoting? Hakol Batur. Okay, fine. Was it tour? No. I don't think the tour was in France either. Uh, okay. Aval um, ha'ish shemarvia parnasasu kabal bais chashu, but a guy who has some profit, like a. Uh, uh, and he eats bread, meat, and cooked foods. Velovish umachase as atmon. He he clothes himself, uh, karoy properly. Vadai dechayev bitzdaka meiser ochomish min parnasasa. He's ob- he's clearly obligated in a uh, tenth or a fifth of his uh, parnasa. Vechel gadol meatzdaka and a big portion of its tzedaka yitain lekrova vani yiro. He can give to his relatives and the people in a city. Umaat muchuyav litein gam lerochokim vani yiro cheres. And a little bit he's obligated to give to people far off and in another city. Im lokain, if not for that, ir shalanim yigavu bara av Then you're going to have cities that die off because of starvation. Elavadai kamosh kasavi. It's definitely like I said. Vitaita lacha shakain hu. You should know that this is the case. Im lokain, because if not, isi gvul titain lafarnasaso shihi kodemis. What limit would you give to saying that your own parnasa comes first, right? You got to get an Xbox. Right. All right. I just said that because I saw a meme about Xboxes. I don't know if people buy it anymore. I need all of my profits I need all my profits from my Parnasa for a horse to ride on and a servant to run in front of me, right? There's no limit to expenditures as, as, as is known. It's definitely like I said. That this whole halakha of the strict prioritization only comes when you are starving, right? Then you 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 apportion it out in that exact order and you only go to the next level when you've exhausted the first level. Uh, but if you have any like, you know, if you're, uh, what do you call it? Middle income family, right? Or whatever, then um, then you you can give most of it based on the priority list, but you gotta give it to other places also I mean, to distribute like, the wealth. If your kids and your wife and you are not starving. Yeah. And you're, you have like basic needs covered. Then, yeah. Then you can like go to the next level. Exactly. Yeah. So this actually changes my practice because I pretty much give all my tzedakah to Farakwe Anian. Um, and uh, and so according to this, uh, and I, I, I did that because I thought that that was what you're supposed to do, right? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, like I'm not giving to my, you know, I don't think anyone in my family needs, but uh, um, but uh, so I can uh, I can expand the tzedakah giving to um, Nigeria. No, <laughs> no, I'm not going to give to that guy, the sketchy guy. What? Yeah. Well, it's, sorry, Holmesik. It's funny he doesn't say to Eretz Israel, right? I mean that that he hasn't addressed yet. That's going to be later on, I think. Uh, but he just is Iracheres, right? He doesn't sound, you know. Yeah. Sorry. What? Yeah, in most places, that's not going to be the case. I mean, uh, I'm sure there are some Jewish communities which are really like, you know, really dire, you know, in, in dire poverty. But uh, I mean, look, I mean, you know, when uh, I mean, they're, they're not poor, but like when, you know, Johnny uh, was in, you know, uh, Namibia and, you know, met the only two uh uh, Orthodox Jews there. Uh, later on, he was asking her about how COVID was treating 
them, you know, this was during the, um, uh, the first part of the pandemic. And she said, you know, uh, you know, thank uh, Hashem that there is enough for our crops. Right. Like, that's like, you know, <laughs> like, I don't know, in some places in Africa, like maybe, uh, you know, like uh, you're, you're in this uh, situation, you know? So, okay, that's, that. see, this, this is really practical. <laughs> okay, All right, let's stop here for today and plan to go on after. Yeah. <laughs>